14, Marissa Arnold. Number one, Jasmine Day Jesus. Number 18, Olivia Iguano. The reserves for Hendrickson are number three, Casey Cooper. Number five, Tabitha Villa. Number 13, Cameron Hammingberg. And number two, Michaela Donnelly. The Lady Hawks are coached by Lindsay Eaton, assisted by Brett Gola and Leanne Sprobley. Now introducing your late Elgin Lady Cats. The starters tonight for Elgin are number five, second baseman Kelsey Calhoun. Number nine, shortstop Jalen Roberson. Number 27, left fielder Cassidy Davis. Number 15, first baseman Mackenzie Harris. Number eight, third baseman Isabella Ramirez. Number seven, designated hitter Peyton Altmiller. Double zero, pitcher Jessica Cantrell. Number four, center fielder Aubrey Gonzalez. Number 34, right fielder Emily Sumner. Number 14, catcher Cameron Davis. The reserves for Elgin are number 10, Andrea Villarreal. Number 19, Dakota Brown. Number 12, Danny King. And number 6, Gabby Sandoval. The Lady Cats are coached by Adam Adams, assisted by Sarah Alamon and Andrea Gonzalez. And now if you will please rise as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this broadcast tonight of Elgin Wildcats softball here on the Vibe Media Network. I'm Brian Reed. Joining alongside in Vibe Land is Daniel. Make sure everything sounds good on the broadcast. Wildcats coming off of a disappointing loss to the Bass Shop Bears, losing by a score of five to two, dropping them to ten and two overall, ten and two in district play, seventeen and five overall. They sit a couple games or game and a half back right now of the Pflugerville Panthers. With number one in the district, and they split the series of Pflugerville early, earlier in the season, giving Pflugerville their only loss in district play. Meanwhile, Hendrickson, they're coming off of a victory. I had them pulled up earlier, and then they're gone. Yep, against the against Pflugerville Connolly High School, winning by a final of 13 to one. So Henderson coming off of a win, Lady Cats coming off of a loss. So Elgin will try to right the ship here on senior night here at Elgin High School. We get to the starting lineup for the Henderson Hawks is um, batting first, playing center field will be Tomastica. Batting second, playing shortstop will be Guerrero. Leg playing catcher, batting third. 
Eon playing third base, batting fourth. Howe at first base, batting fifth. Robinson in the circle tonight, batting sixth. Batting seventh will be Barry, to be playing left field. Designated player tonight, batting eighth will be Arnold and De Jesus in the nine hole, playing second base. And Kano in right, she's your flex player for tonight. In the circle tonight for the Elkin Wildcats will be Jessica Cantrell, still be pitching to Tomasica, but behind home plate will be Davis, Ramirez over at third base, Roberson at shortstop, Calhoun at second base, McKenzie Ferris at first, Davis in the left field, Gonzalez in center, and Sumner in right, first pitch of the ball game. And not sure if she went around or was in the zone, looks like it was in the zone regardless, so in there for a strike. scoreboard, but I'll do that when the time comes. That one's on the ground. Robertson up with it. Throws it over to first in time to get the first out of the inning. So Ariana Guerrero will step in now. Bit of an interesting win here tonight at Elgin High School. Not be sure what direction I am facing. But then we have a bit of a southern win, according to my phone at least. It's like it says I'm pointing north, but I could be wrong if I'm wrong. Please correct me, I'll be here tomorrow doing the baseball game. So the win this time though, normally for softball, it is right behind the players. This time, it is right in the batter's face as first pitch is in there for a strike. Which means baseball players will have the wind directly behind them. That's the way the fields are set up. You can probably hear the wind right now on my crowd microphone, trying to keep it out as much as possible. It's a little tricky to do. A oh, one pitch rolls in there. It's one and one. And that wind is super powerful. I'm going to put my mic way down. It's just noises that you just don't want to hear. One one pitch is swung on and missed for strike two. As Guerrero went chasing after one there. The one-two pitch to Guerrero is cut on and missed for strike three. First strikeout for Cantrell. And there's two away now for Miranda Legg, the catcher. Legs ready. Pitch from Cantrell. Now in misses low for a ball. Top of the first inning. No score, two outs, nobody on. Hendrickson against the Young and the Wildcats. The 1 0 pitch, that one's fouled away. It's now 1 and 1. It's just picking up on my microphone. So, let me see if that helps it out. As that one's hit on the ground, it's snagged by Mackenzie Ferris. She'll take it herself over to the first base bag in time. Now, in the inning, a 1 2 3 top of the first inning. We'll head to the bottom half with our score. Hendrickson, nothing. Wildcats coming up. Listening to Elgin Wildcats softball on the Vibe Media Network. Keep it here. Sports. One of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 13 again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe. 
BYPE.com. BYPE.com. Let's just jump right back into things here at Elgin High School. Bottom half of the first inning, Wildcats about to get their first at bats here. And we pitch, going up against Robertson in the circles. We pitching to leg. Aon playing third base. Guerrero at, sec, at shortstop. De Jesus at short. Howe at first base. Barry in left field. Tomasica in center. And Cano over in right. I do apologize for all the wind sounds. It's not being picked up by my crowd mic. It's actually being picked up by my personal microphone. See right there, actually I was covering it up and then actually stopped it. So it's just a windy night here at Elgin High School. I'm trying my best to stop it. If I turn my low end down, it does stop it, but that sounded really weird. So I need that bass in there. Try to my best. Maybe I do a low cut. And it kind of works. But that out of the way. It'll be Kelsey Calhoun to lead things off here for the Elgin Wildcats. She'll be followed by Jalen Roberson and Cassidy Davis here in the first inning. Batting fourth will be Mackenzie Ferris, followed by Isabella Ramirez, Peyton Altmiller, Jessica Cantrell, Aubrey Gonzalez, and Emily Sumner. Calhoun's in the box. Pitch from Robertson. Misses low and outside for a ball. So it might be making my camera move too. I'm sitting at a bench they have set up in the bleachers. It's very sturdy, but it does move. 1-1 one, one pitch. Well, that one misses upstairs. It's 2-0. Infield playing fairly shallow at the corners. Outfield playing fairly shallow, fairly shallow too, especially considering how the wind is right now. Won't mention the wind the whole broadcast, but definitely does play a factor. 2-0 pitch. That one misses outside. It's now three balls and no strikes to Calhoun. On deck is Jalen Roberson. Robertson ready, Here comes a 3-0 pitch. That one's right down the pipe, it's three and one. Calhoun's ready in the box. The 3-1 pitch shows bunt, gets the bunt down right back to Robertson. Up with it, and they're not gonna make a play. His leg tried to beat that throw, but Calhoun able to leg it out. So leadoff base hit for the Elgin Wildcats, and that'll bring up Jalen Roberson. Robertson getting the signs from the coach. Robertson in the box, wide open, and it's going to show bunt. Tries to get the bunt down, and Calhoun's going to try to steal, and she will steal. Now she's going to try to go third base, the throw to third, and Calhoun's going to be out. And I think there was a play right there where Calhoun was supposed to steal second on a bunt, and then she was going to try to take third, and she just didn't stop running. So trying to be aggressive. So there's one out now in the top of the first inning, so in the bottom of the first inning. So Roberson now batting with the bases empty. That's what that does. On an 0-1, and she'll watch one float outside. It's 1-1. One and one. Interesting decision right there. Not necessarily a sin, Calhoun. I think that was a good decision. It wasn't that. It was the decision to try to go for third. And I think she thought maybe the ball had gotten the way. It was a good throw there by De Jesus over to Aon to get Calhoun out. 1-1 one, one pitch. That one's fouled away on a play. And it's 1-1. One one. Roberson's ready to pitch from Robertson. That one swung up the middle. Now get on through for a base hit. 
So back-to-back knocks to lead things off for the Wildcats. And I'm gonna have Cassidy Davis with one out. So Robeson just went up there and got that one. Cassidy up in the box, first pitch, rolls in there. Roberson off the bag, just a touch, but we'll stay put. Davis ready, 1-1 one, one pitch, shows bunt, can't get the bunt down, and Roberson's caught off the bag. She'll try to get the second base, and she's gonna be safe at second. Roberson was almost caught in a pickle right there and decided just to go for second base and she's in there safely beating the tag from Guerrero. So runner in scoring position now for Cassidy Davis. The count should be 2-0 actually as Davis calls time, she wants to warm up. Powerful. This pitch misses upstairs. Leave now it should be three balls, no strikes, and the umpire does confirm that. Mackenzie Ferris is on deck. Three O pitch, and that one's well inside. That one actually might hit. Might have hit Cassidy Davis. Either way. She's able to take first base as Roberson was moving on the pitch. She has to go back over to first base now, or second base. Now bring up Mackenzie Ferris, or, or as she's listed on the lineup card, Mac Ferris. Ferris with a very wide open stance, looking to pull this one. That one misses low. Roberson's way off the bag. And they're not going to make a play. Robeson kind of baiting legs, see if she might make a throw over to second base. Adams showing 3 2 1. Might be trying to attempt a double steal right here. 1 1 pitch. Shows bunt. Can't get the bunt down. It's Ferris is kind of bunt on a pitch well outside the zone. One, one pitch well upstairs. That one's going to go away to the backstop. And now they're able to advance to second and third base. So 2 1 count now. Mackenzie Ferris, she's got two runners now in scoring position. It's Wildcats with a big opportunity here in the first. That one misses low and inside. It's now 3 and 1. Isabella Ramirez on deck. Three one shows bun and it's foul back of the plate. Two pitch, misses upstairs, ball four. So bases loaded with one out for the third baseman, Isabella Ramirez. Never in my life have I seen a grand slam. I would love to see one at least one time, at least in person. In this win, though, it would take, it would take a poke to get one out of here. Let's see it, first pitch to Ramirez, that one is low. 
for a ball. So Robertson over at third base, Davis at second base, and Mackenzie Ferris over at first. One-0 pitch, shows bunt, gets the bunt down. Robertson tries to slip it to home plate. She's out at home plate. So Ramirez decides to bunt with the bases loaded and Robertson, say Robertson's able to flip it over the leg at home plate and they will just to get the force out. And that being a Peyton Altmiller. So bases loaded now two away here at the bottom of the first inning. Still no scores. The wind is actually throwing some dirt in my eye. I'm not gonna lie. Just powerful. Knock your socks off. Paul Miller's ready. First pitch misses upstairs. One oh pitch inside that hitter. And that'll bring home a run as Cassidy Davis comes on home. It's now one to nothing, Wildcats. That means now the pitcher will get a chance to really help herself out. So we got Ferris over at third base, Ray Ramirez over at second, and we have Alt Miller over at first. Two away here in the bottom of the first inning. Wildcats in front by one. Looking to add on first pitch, and she swings at the first pitch and fouls that one up the third baseline. Oh, one pitch. That one's fouled away. Now we'll get. Most of the parking lot. Gotta be careful over there. So it's an 0 2 count on Jessica Cantrell. Base is loaded. Wildcats well, already scored one in the hit by pitch. Two base hits this inning. Looking to add on right here. 0 2 pitch. That one's hitting the air to right. Should go into foul territory. Long run, but that won't be well out of play. Antrell looking to really help herself out. Holds the bat high, 0-2 pitch. And takes one outside. Very slow pitch, let's float it in there. Ferris over at third base, Ramirez over at second, and Alt Miller over at first. Two away, bottom of the first inning. One to nothing, Wildcats over the Hawks. One, two pitch to Cantrell, and that one is hit in the air, popped up. Guerrero, underneath it now, who wants it? And catch made by De Jesus for the final out of the inning. But the Wildcats score one and the bases loaded hit by a pitch. And after one complete, our score, Elgin Wildcats one, Henderson Hawks nothing. You listen to Elgin Wildcats softball on the Vite Media Network. Vite Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VitePE.com. Vite is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, not yet, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to VitePE.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. 
Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vipe, B-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vipe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vipe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vipe, B-Y-P-E dot com. Top of the second year to Elgin High School. Wildcats in front, one to nothing over the Hendrickson Hawks. We'll try just doing less gain, maybe that might help it out. Yeah, it kind of works. Uh, not ideal. So Aon will step in now. And Trell pitching a 1-2-3 top of the first inning. First pitch to Aon, misses inside for a ball. Not in the box, here comes the 1-0 pitch, fouls that one away. And it's a one and one. Cantrell's ready. 1-1 one, one pitch. And that one's in there for a strike. One, two pitch, swung on and missed, strike three. Second strike out for Cantrell. And there's one away now for Hal. I believe it's Avery Howe. It's listed as H-O-W-E, but I heard someone in the crowd yell, it's Howe. So let's go with that. First pitch in there for a strike. It was the 0-1 pitch, and that one misses low. It's 1-1. One one. Howell's 1-1 one, one pitch is cut on and missed. And it's one and two now. And Charles ready, swings the arm around, and that one misses upstairs. They just gotten away from Cantrell. Cantrell's 2-2, cut on and miss, strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Cantrell, her third of the ball game. Now bring up the pitcher, McKenna Robertson. Robertson in there for a strike. A one pitch is fouled away. It's now 0 and 2. Nobody on. Two outs here on the top of the second. Wildcats leading the Hawks 1 to nothing. O2 
2-2 pitch to Robertson is cut on and missed strike three. So Jessica Cantrell strikes out the side in the top of the second. And we've played one and a half in our score. Wildcats one, Hendrickson nothing. You listen to Elgin Wildcats softball on the Vipe Media Network. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, not yet, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. What pitch to Wilson? She fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. Yeah. For the end zone, touchdown Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk-off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. I don't know why that commercial cuts out at the last second. It's a shame, it's actually one of my favorites that we have. We have four, and that's one of my favorites, so if you get bored of the commercials that we play, sorry. Uh, either way here, bottom of the second inning. Wildcats in front by one, it'll be Aubrey Gonzalez, Emily Sumner, and Kelsey Calhoun. That's eight, nine, and one due up for the Elgin Wildcats. Wildcats had a lot of base running action in the bottom of the, the the bottom of the first inning, but left the bases loaded. First pitch to Gonzalez. That's on the run. That's gonna sneak on through for a base hit. So Robinson, sorry, Gonzalez just going the other way with that one. And De Jesus couldn't catch up to it. And that'll bring up Emily Sumner. So for the second straight inning, the Wildcats have the leadoff runner on. Shows bunt, takes one outside, leg fakes the throw back over to first base. Pitch misses outside. Let's get, let's get in leg, fakes the throw. Gonzalez over at first base. Nobody out in the bottom of the second inning. 2 0 pitch. Now misses inside. It's now a 3 0 as Kelsey, as Kelsey Calhoun is on deck. Sumner winning for a 3-0 pitch. And now she calls time. Looks like Robertson may have taken just a little bit too long. Comes a 3-0. Shows bunt. Bunt's it foul. Throw it on second base and in safely is Gonzalez. Either that pitch was in there or she bunted the foul, but I think she had her hand in the air, so now it's three and one. Runner in scoring position for the Wildcats. I mean, that's not to hide the wind from my old microphone. It's an almost impossible task. Three one pitch in there for a strike. Payoff pitch on the ground, back up the middle. Guerrero up with that, throws over to first, not in time. 
Rero may have held on to that one for just a second. And now we got runners at the corners with nobody out for Kelsey Calhoun. So also for the second straight inning, the Wildcats have back-to-back -back base hits, only this time there wasn't an out in between there as Kelsey Calhoun did get on last time on a leadoff bunt single. But was thrown out on a, after a steal second, trying to take third. First pitch to Calhoun inside. They're going to pick a third on second base. So Sumner will wind up at second on Fielder's Indifference. So Gonzalez at third. And Sumner at second as the 1-0 pitch misses low and inside. The 2-0 pitch. That one's lines the left field. Now will get down for a base hit. One run's going to come home. They're going to have to hold the runner up and try to get to second base of that one is Calhoun, and she will. And Calhoun, very aggressive on the base paths. So the score now, two to nothing, is coming home with Gonzalez. So three hits in a row right now for the Wildcats. And Calhoun going from, you know, going all the way to second base. So why don't you roll that double or going a second on the throw? I might have to call it doubles because Calhoun never stopped running. So we got Sumner over at third base and Calhoun over at second for Roberson. But a base hit her last time up back up the middle. Wildcats like the score or early and often. Kind of let it get away from them then, get away from them in the bottom of the first inning. So looking to add on here is the 1-0-1 one, oh, oh, one pitch. Excuse me, misses upstairs. It's one and one to Roberson. One pitch, fouled away, it's one and two now. Bottom half of the second inning, two on, there's nobody out. Wildcats have already scored one in the inning, doubling their lead, it's two to nothing. Again, Emily Sumner over at third base and uh, Kelsey Calhoun over at second. And Robertson's already one for one tonight. 1-2 pitch. That one's back up the middle. Now get down for a base hit and split the gap. That will score two runs easily as Kelsey Gahoon is going to come to the plate. And the Wildcats once again double their lead. It's now 4 to nothing. So two for two tonight is Jalen Robertson picking up a couple of RBIs. And I'll bring up Cassidy Davis. I believe she reached on a walk. Full disclosure, I don't have a scorebook with me. That's on me. But I'm doing my best. Either way, still nobody out. First pitch to Davis misses, it, misses inside. No pitch is on the ground as Roberson was on the move. It's now one and one. Roberson at first base, shows bunt. Pulls the bunt back, and that one gets all the way to the backstop. And Roberson is thinking about trying for 
third base when we'll decide against it. Wildcats trying to be aggressive on the base paths. Two one pitch on the ground, but fouled at the third baseline. Two two pitch to Davis. Upstairs, it's now a full count. Bottom of the second inning, two runs have already come across here for the Wildcats. They lead four to nothing over the Hendrickson Hawks. You have Jalen Robertson over at second base. Cassie Davis at the plate. Payoff pitch is on the ground, but a fair ball up the third baseline just inside the back. They're gonna send Robertson home. The throw to the plate will be not nearly in time. And heading on into second base will be Davis with an RBI double. It's five to nothing, Wildcats. So McKenzie Ferris will step in now. First pitch, upstairs and outside for a ball. Sixth batter this inning for the Wildcats. All previous five hitters have all reached and have all scored. Might be one of those innings for the Wildcats as Ferris went chasing after a pitch upstairs. Yeah, a little bit excited, it was slow moving, it was upstairs. Sometimes those just look like they're on a tee for you. 1-1 one, one pitch to Ferris. That one's line to the third baseline, but just foul. Got a little bit too ahead of that one. So Cassidy Davis at second base, McKenzie Ferris at the plate. Starting to get dark here in Elgin High School, and the mercury is starting to drop as well. 1-2 pitch, hit in the air to left field, that's gonna go over the head of the left fielder, Barry, and go all the way to the wall. Davis will come home and score easily. It's another double, and it's now six to nothing, Wildcats. So Ramirez will step in now. She bunted in her previous plate appearance. And that caused a force out at home plate. She bunted with the bases loaded. But reached on a fielder's choice. Still nobody out this inning. The Wildcats have scored five times. Every single batter has reached and scored. This is the seventh batter this inning. That one's low. So Ferris over at second base. Isabella Robin Ramirez at the plate. That one's popped up. Foul territory should be playable. And Hal can't quite find that. Wasn't in the air for long. It wasn't too much time to try to locate that one. So Ramirez is now waiting for a 1-1 pitch from Robertson. That one's lined on the left field line, but well fouled. So 
Isabella. Pulls bat in front, she'll pull it back, takes a one, two, and that one's lined to left field, well back in, off the wall. Another run's gonna come home, it's a third consecutive double. I think that makes four this inning for the Wildcats. They lead now seven to nothing over the Hawks. And time is called as the head coach of the Wildcats, Coach Eaton. She wants to have a conversation with Robertson in the circle. Wayne may have caught that one and knocked it down as Ramirez absolutely launched one to left field. Thought that was going to be a home run, but it hit off the wall. I tell you the kind of inning it's been for the Wildcats. They have now sent eight batters to the plate. Well, Peyton Altmiller will make the eighth batter to the plate. And every single one of them has scored. And they've had a six run inning. As potential run number seven sits at second base. And the Wildcats left them loaded in the bottom in the bottom half of the first inning. So Al Miller had the first RBI for the Wildcats and a hit by a pitch. Left hander ready. First pitch and she pops that one up and leg can't find it. Wasn't in the air for long, hard to locate. You saw Leg in warm-ups was practicing trying to locate pop-ups. Pitch the designated player Alt Miller and she'll pop this one up. Aeon underneath it, but it's gonna go off the screen. Aeon actually was looking for it underneath it. So O in two count now to Alt Miller. She is coming out swinging. The 0 2 pitch, fouled it back. Just a little behind it. O 2 pitch, that one's lined to right field. Cano coming in, and she'll make the catch on the run. For the first out of the inning, Cano had to run a long way. Jessica Cantrell will step in. She popped up her last time out to end the inning. So Al Miller, the first Wildcat to be retired this inning. Cantrell, the ninth batter to step up. Already a sixth run inning. Wildcats looking to add more. First pitch, misses upstairs. One zero pitch. This is outside for a ball. So Ramirez over at second base. I think Wildcats must hit four doubles this inning. They scored six times. Two zero pitch. Line to left field. I'll get down for a base hit. He goes off the glove of Barry. They're going to hold the runner over at third base as Cantrell will wind up at second. Now Callum Daz, another double. As it was hit hard right at Barry, went off her glove, and Ramirez decided not to throw. And we'll get a courtesy runner in for Jessica Cantrell. That'll be number 19, Dakota Brown. 
And Aubrey Gonzalez will step in. She led off this inning with a base hit. So she is one for one. As the Wildcats have officially batted the round, and this is usually where I'd say they bust my scorecard. But still fun regardless. First pitch is popped up. Robertson underneath it. She makes the catch. And there's two away now. Emily Sumner will step in. She had a base hit her last time up as well. First pitch to Sumner, and that one's popped up. Should be playable. De Jesus looking for it. She can't come up with it. That's lands in fair territory. Now two runs are gonna score. Sumner is gonna wind up over at second base. I can't roll that anything else other than an error on De Jesus. As her and Howe are trying to find it. And it just kept falling. And falling over to the right. I guess it would be their left. So the wind doesn't do also doesn't doesn't just knock things down. It also makes it so that he'll be caught and it'll make you go any different direction as that one's ground up the first baseline. Hal picks it up and she tags first herself in time to end the inning. But the Wildcats send eleven batters to the plate. They score eight times to lead nine to nothing over the Hendrickson Hawks. So after two complete, our score, Elgin Wildcats nine, Hendrickson nothing. Listening to Elgin Wildcats softball on the Bite Media Network. Keep it here. Bite Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at BiteBYPE.com. Bite is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone, touchdown Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one! Log on to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Top of the third here. Wildcats in front of the Hendrickson Hawks, nine to nothing. First six batters have been sat down by Jessica Cantrell, striking out the side in the top of the second inning. So seven, eight, nine, two up for the Hawks. That'll be Arnold, De Jesus, and Cano. Sorry, make that Arnold, sorry, Barry, Arnold, and De Jesus. So Cantrell's pitch to Barry on the way, and she swings and misses for a strike. Cantrell's ready, here comes the 0-1 pitch. That one's fouled away, it's now 0-2. Two pitch is cut on and missed, strike three. Fourth strikeout in a row for Cantrell, her fifth overall. So that will bring up Marissa Arnold. Top of the third inning, nobody on. Two, one out, not two outs, one out. I'm seeing into the future. Eventually, there will be two outs. Pitch to Arnold, and that one is in there for a strike. A 
0-1 pitch. That one's right in there for a strike. It's now 0-2 on Arnold. The 0 2 pitch to Arnold is cut on and missed. Strike three. Make it five in a row for Cantrell. So De Jesus will step in now. First pitch misses upstairs for a ball. That ends the streak. That was six consecutive strikes thrown by Cantrell. He got excited. Thought we might be able to see an immaculate inning, which is three strikeouts on nine pitches. Rarer than no hitter. It's very tough to do. It was a 1-0 pitch. That one swung on and missed. One one pitch to Jesus. That one's cut on and missed. It's now one and two. The one two pitch cut on and missed. Strike three for the second straight inning. Cantrell strikes out the side, and that is her seventh strikeout overall. Nine in a row retired by Cantrell. We'll head to the bottom of the third inning. Our score, Wildcats nine, Hendrickson nothing. You're listening to Elgin Wildcats softball on the Bite Media Network. Bite Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at BiteVYPE.com. Bite is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. One pitch to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to BiteVYPE.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Bottom of the third inning here at Elgin High School. Wildcats in front, nine to nothing over the Hendrickson Hawks. Wildcats batted the round. They sent almost they sent every single batter to the plate. Went back around the top of the order. And almost every single one of them scored. As Dakota Brown will be getting her first at bat. as she courtesy ran for Jessica Cantrell back in the bottom of the second inning, eventually coming around to score. She'll be in the place of Jalen Roberson as a slow roller up the first baseline and how able to grab the ball and make the play out to first on her own for the first out of the inning. Then we have Cassidy Davis. She had a double in her previous plate appearance. Pitch to Davis. Upstairs for a ball. Base is empty. One out here in the bottom of the third inning. Wildcats in front by nine. one pitch, well inside. That almost hits Davis. She gets out of the way. Had a Wildcat game the other day. The baseball team, they played Bastrop. Where it hit the catcher. And the umpire said that he actually got in the way of the ball. Never seen it happen, but it's very rare. 2-0 pitch. 
That one floats in there for a strike. Comes the 2 1. That one floats. That one rolls in there, excuse me, and it's now 3 and 1. Mackenzie Ferris is on deck. one outside ball four so David Charles a one out walk and now bring up Mackenzie Ferris Ferris also with an RBI double her last time up a little bit there looks like the Wildcats are simply just trading places in the second base bag First pitch is inside for a ball. So Cassidy Davis over at first base, Mackenzie Ferris at the plate. One out, Wildcats in front by nine. Looking to go double digits here. That one rolls in there, it's now two and oh. Two well pitch to Ferris, and that one is rammed to center field, going all the way back and off the wall. So I think Cassie Davis may have thought that one was getting out of here, and she had slowed down a little bit, maybe trying to see if Tomasica was going to catch that. The wind definitely knocked that one down. So I think Ferris had definitely had a home run distance. Either way, though, runners at second and third. There's only one out for Isabella Ramirez. She also had a double her last time up that looked like it may have gotten out or was on the way of getting out. Ramirez showing bunt. Pulls the bunt back and takes one low for a ball. So we got Davis over at third base, Ferris over at second. 0-1 pitch misses upstairs. It's now 2-0. 2 one pitch on the ground right to the second baseman. She'll throw it to first in time. Run does come home. The Wildcats make it double digits. They now lead 10 to nothing as Mackenzie Ferris will go over to third base. Next seven, so Peyton Altmiller will step in now. Saul Miller misses outside for a ball. So two away, one, one run already across for the Wildcats. One no pitch, rolls in there, it gets away from leg and Ferris will stay put. Pitch to Alt Miller, and that one misses low. It's now three balls and no strikes. Jessica Cantrell on deck. All my waiting for a 3 0 pitch, and that one's in there for a strike. Let's count now three and one. Here it comes. That one's hitting the air to left center field. That's going to get down for a base hit. Ferris will come on home to score. 
Wildcats make it now 11 to nothing. So Jessica Cantrell will step in now. And a double in the previous inning. That sat down nine in the row in the circle, striking out seven. Chance to help herself out even further as the first pitch. That one's hitting the air to right center field. Going back on it is Cano, still going back, and that one's gonna bounce off the wall. And they're gonna send her on home as Cantrell will wind up over at third base with a triple. Peyton Altmiller scoring away from first to home. Cantrell winding over third base. It's now 12 to nothing. So Aubrey Gonzalez will step in now. I say it was a wonderful piece of hitting by Cantrell, just going the opposite direction. That one just carried and just carried and carried. And Cano, I think, was a little bit surprised on how far back that one went. Pitch to Gonzalez, misses inside. One zero pitch. That one's gonna get down for a base hit. As Gonzalez makes it thirteen to nothing now. And then the ball gets away. Gonzalez will wind up at second base. Now bring up Emily Sumner. And the scoreboard right now still reads 11 to nothing. The score is, by my count, 13 to nothing. So I think right now, I'm not sure what the umpire is talking about with the players. I think she's, I think the umpire now is actually pointing out that the score should be 13 to nothing. I think that's what they're pointing out now. They got that correct. This is important right now as the Wildcats. Have a chance to run rule the Henderson Hawks and this would be big as Cantrell the chance for a perfect game. And she sat down nine in a row as Sumner's pitch, pitches Sumner. Is in there for a strike. So we got Gonzalez over at second base, Emily Sumner at the plate. Home run right here would be a walk off home run essentially. 0-1 pitch, that one's hitting near to right center field. Cano racing over underneath it now, she'll make the catch to end the inning. Wildcats get four more. We'll head to the top of the fourth inning with our score. Wildcats 13, the Hendrickson Hawks nothing. Listen to Elgin Wildcats softball on the Vipe Media Network. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VibeBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. One pitch to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. Top of the fourth inning here at Elgin High School. They lead the Henderson Hawks by a score of 13 to nothing. We're back at the top of the order for the Henderson Hawks. It'll be Tomastica, Guerrero, and Leg due up. Cantrell has retired the first nine batters she's faced. She has struck out the previous six to make seven overall. I 
don't care who you are, and that's still impressive. Seven strikeouts in the first nine hitters. That's good. See how it shows the second time through the order as first pitch is fouled back. Yes, time is called. I think they're is it the hat. He's gonna go over Ferris about the, about the hat. Oh, they're saying the tuck in the tassel. Actually, I just got to point out, this is actually, I've never seen this before. Mackenzie Ferris is not wearing a ball cap or a mask. She's wearing a fisherman's hat. I guess she just couldn't find her normal hat. Doesn't have to wear a hat, but that's fine with me. 0-1 pitch, foul back. It's now 0-2 with the umpire. Starting to tuck in the tassel, I think. That makes sense. By the way, top of the fourth inning. Nobody on, nobody out. Tabasco at the plate. 0-2 count. The 0-2 pitch on the ground. Robertson up with it, throws over to first, and that one's gonna get away from Ferris. Actually, that was not Robertson over at shortstop. But now runner over at second base. I can't rule that anything else other than an error. Just let me try to get. It was really over at shortstop. That's Cassidy Davis, she has moved on over to shortstop as Dakota Brown is now in left field. First pitch misses, it's 1-0. So first base runner tonight for the Hendrickson Hawks. There's Damasica. one -oh pitch, now one's gonna get away from Davis. And that will allow Tomasica to wind up over at third base. Bye fly, formerly K-Max. Be aware. And that's Cameron Davis behind the plate. So Gonzalez now, the Guerrero waiting for a 2-0 pitch, misses outside, it's now a 3-0. Second time through the order can always be tricky. Rio pitch in there for a strike. Guerrero getting ready to throw the bat away and take the trot on over to first. And the umpire says, hold on there. Headquarters sometimes they call strike if they see they're about to throw the bat. 3-1 pitch in there for a strike. It's now 3-2. And, and Trail, who was behind 0-2, sorry, 3-0, and 0, is able to work the count full. Tomasco over at third base. There's nobody out. Here comes the payoff pitch to Guerrero. That one's a slow roller. And they're going to try to make the tag. There, no play will be made as Ferris couldn't quite. I need to do some work on my lineup card. But either way, that's Cameron Davis actually now over at first base. And Dakota Brown is actually behind home plate. Play run does come home, that ends the no hit bid for Jessica Cantrell. One pitch misses low, and it's one and one. I got it now. So it's Dakota Brown behind home plate, and Cassidy, sorry, Cameron Davis, who was the flex player tonight, advancing on over to first.
far as left fielder is concerned. You can't see that number as the pitch misses inside. It's now a three and one. So Cantrell, who had sat down the first Nine batters and striking out the previous six. A little bit of trouble finding the zone right here as the one pitch misses upstairs. So the first four batters to have reached here in the top of the fourth inning. Now bring up Giselle Ao. And she was the beginning of six consecutive strikeouts for Cantrell. Now a conversation in the circles. I think the entire middle infield, infield in general, wants to have a conversation Cantrell who had everything in control. Well, the yeah, Gats were very close due to a run roll victory. But in the grand scheme of things, Wildcats just want to win. Proved to 11 and two. As first pitch is fouled back against the screen. It's 0-1. As Henderson dugout has really come alive. Got Guerrero over at second base, leg over at first. Oh one, now it misses low and inside. And it's one and one. One pitch shows bunt, gets the bunt down to the third baseline. Third baseman has it, throws it over to first, and now be in time to get the out. So Ramirez over to Davis. That was a wonderful play there by Ramirez to get on. So Howe will step in now. Umpire going for some more softballs. First pitch to Howe, that one misses low for a ball. Warner's at second and third, only one out. Hawks already scored once this inning. Looking to close the gap. As the 1-0 pitch is in there for a strike. One pitch shows bunt, pops the bunt up, but can't quite catch that one is Dakota Brown. That would have been a tremendous play. She dove for it though. <laughs> and now I have my new left fielder, that's Emily Sumner. Now I gotta find out who's playing right. The one two pitch to Howe is cut on and missed for strike three. Eighth strikeout now for Cantrell. Now bring up the pitcher, Robertson. Pitches fouled away, almost into the dugout. I'm 
with the 0-1 pitch, Robertson. That's a sloth line drive. Throw to first base in time for the final out of the inning. So that was Davis to Davis. And that ends the top of the fourth. Hendrickson gets one. They end the no-hit no perfect game bid. And the Wild, but the Wildcats still leave 13 to one. So we'll head to the bottom of the fourth inning. This is Elgin Wildcats softball on the Vite Media Network. Keep it here. Vite Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VitePE.com. Vite is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, not yet another verse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. What takes the Wilson? She fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VitePE.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEVYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vipe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vipe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEVYPE.com. Bottom half of the fourth inning here at Elgin High School. Elgin Wildcats lead Hendrickson Hawks. The Hendrickson Hawks, got to slur that again. The Hendrickson Hawks by a score of 13 to one, a 12 run lead. And we're back at the top of the order. Kelsey Calhoun will step in and she'll look at one in there for a strike from Robertson. Wildcats scored one in the first, eight in the second, and then four in the third. A one pitch, that one's on the ground. Swartz up has it and the throw brings Howe off the bag. So Calhoun will reach again. I think that's the third or fourth time tonight. I think she's reached in almost every single inning. So Dakota Brown will step in. Her first at bat in the previous inning and she grounded into Howe over at first base. First pitch in there for a strike. A one pitch. That one's in here to left field, but well foul. Brown waiting for an 0-2 pitch and she'll foul that one back way over the screen and out of play. Pitcher just, the picture just keeps on getting worse as the camera starts moving, trying to get more of the field in play. Yeah, Calhoun over at first base, Dakota Brown at the plate, nobody out, bottom of the fourth inning. Wildcats in front by 12, score 13 to one. 0-2 oh, pitch to Brown, she goes up there and she gets that one. That was a pitch that was up in the zone and Brown just went there and got it. Wow. 
So two on now, nobody out for Cassidy Davis. Not sure if the run roll would still be in effect if a home run was hit. Would be some kind of victory though. Pitch to Davis, and so watch one float outside for a ball. And Calhoun over at second base, Brown over at first. One zero pitch. Well inside, almost hits Davis. Backs her off the plate. One zero pitch, foul back. It's two and zero. Davis ready, comes the 2-1 pitch, misses upstairs, three balls, one strike. On deck is Andre Villarreal. 3-1 is low, ball four. So now the bases are loaded with nobody out. having a conversation with the umpire. So we got the bases loaded with Wildcats here. Nobody out. Those first three batters have reached. Double base hits and a walk. And Villarreal chance to potentially walk things off right here. His first pitch and thinks about offering. Side skins it and takes it outside for a ball. one -oh pitch back up the middle and through for a base hit. Two runs are gonna score and makes the score 15 to one. Andrea Villarreal, her first at bat is a two RBI single. So Isabella Ramirez will step in now. She's hit it hard almost every time she stepped out to the plate. But he wants almost getting one out of here. Nobody out. Wildcats in front by 14. First pitch by Ramirez, she tried to jump that one and just got ahead of it. Comes the 0-1 pitch, that one's gonna roll in there. Pitch to Ramirez, that one's on the ground, but foul, and it's one and two. Davis over at third base. Over at first base is Villarreal. One, two pitch to Ramirez. Popped up. Should be playable. De Jesus underneath it makes the grab. That was not an easy play to make as the wind caught that. And now you can, can actually finally officially see when it is 
picking up dust and it is getting in my eyes. <laughs> Peyton Altmiller will step in now, runners at the corners. Time was called by the umpire, I think. Yep, Coach Eden wants to have a conversation in the circle with Robertson. There's one way in the bottom of the fourth inning, Wildcats in front by 14. Everyone's gotten back to their places. Paul Miller brought in the first run and the base is loaded, hit by a pitch. Inning where the Wildcats left, the base is loaded. First pitch to Alt Miller. That one's popped up. Should be playable off of the screen. They're gonna call it a foul ball, just barely. As leg was able to locate it, but it brushes up against the screen. One pitch, Alt Miller misses outside. It's one and one. One one pitch popped up. De Jesus underneath it, and she'll make the catch. And there's now two away. So Jessica can travel step in now, a chance to end her own game. Trail hit hard in previous innings. Big right hander digs in. Pitch from Robertson. Misses outside. Ball one. Davis over at third base. Villarreal over at first. picking up. Pitches line, that's a fair ball up the third baseline. And coming on home to score is Davis. That makes the score 16 to one. Let's see if that calls it and that is the ball game. Jessica Cantrell walks it off for herself. I could pick a player of this game, probably would be Jessica Cantrell. We're trying the first nine Henderson Hawks she faced. She struck out, let me double check, I think she struck out one, two, three, four, two, four. She struck out eight and allowing one unearned run, I believe. And driving in a couple and ending her own game, but it's a full team effort in this one's the Wildcats jump all over the Henderson Hawks and they beat them by a score of 16 to one. So that'll do it from us here for at the Vite Media Network. I'd like to thank you for tuning into this broadcast. I'd like to thank Daniel for making sure everything sounded good over in Vibe Land. My name is Brian Reed saying so long, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.